Let's take a look at the static beam again, except now what we're going to do is cut the cable and let it rotate. And so cable's cut, and what we want to do is figure out the angular acceleration of the beam when it's at this position. And so now we need the rotational inertia of the beam. And so I, about the end of a rod, is one-third ml squared. And we need the free body diagram again, except now no tension, just the weight of the beam and the forces at the hinge. But we will sum the torques about the hinge so those don't matter. And notice now I have clockwise positive because that's the way the beam's going to go. Let's make it so everything's positive. And so if this is theta here, we know that this would be 90 minus theta, uh, this angle. And so the perpendicular component of the weight would be sine of 90 minus theta, or theta would also be over here, and so the perpendicular component uh, would be a uh, cosine theta. So some of the torques equal I alpha, and we have I, and so we put that into there, and the torque would be the weight times cosine theta, or again, sine 90 minus theta, times the lever arm. Don't forget the lever arm. This is some of the torques, and so we need a lever arm, which would be half the length since the weight is at the center of the beam. Solving for alpha, get some simplification. Uh, the L goes, and we get 3G cosine theta over 2L. And we can put in L equals 4, and theta is 35 degrees, and we get 3 radians per second per second. But as the beam falls, theta gets less, so you can see alpha is going to increase as the weight of the beam gets more and more perpendicular to the lever arm, the torque increases. So if we want to figure out something about how fast the beam is going, energy would be a better way. So let's take a look at an example like that. And so same thing, we have the beam uh, held back and we're going to cut the cable, but now the beam is going to fall and we want to figure out the angular velocity of the beam when it's in the horizontal position. And so conservation of energy is the way to go. Uh, neglecting any friction or air resistance, the energy doesn't change. The initial equals the final. The initial is potential. If we say the height is zero in this position, uh, there's no potential for the final energy, just kinetic energy of rotation. And so potential energy, gravitational potential, MGH, and then rotational kinetic energy, one-half I omega squared. And we know what I is, but H is a little tricky here. What part of the beam do we track? This part of the beam hardly dropped at all. This part of the beam dropped a lot more. And so we know the part of the beam to keep track of is the center of mass of the beam. And so this the change in height of the center of mass. And so it goes from here. Now it's really down over here, right? But the change in height of the center of mass is this distance. And so it's opposite this 35 degree angle, and this is L over 2, the hypotenuse, and so the height is L over 2 sine theta. And so figuring out that is kind of the key to this sort of problem. And now we can put that in for H, and we get some simplification. Uh, the mass goes, the 2 goes, one of the L's goes, and we can solve for omega, and put in theta equals 35, and L is 4, and you get 2.1 radians per second per second. If you want to give this one a try, how about this? Find omega when the beam is at its lowest point. And so what would the change in height be then for the center of mass? Uh, give that a try. I'm going to give you the answer, so pause before you try it. Okay, here we're back. Here's the answer. Did you get 3.4? If you did, you have mastered this sort of problem.